Venus subdues Mars, and Jupiter, Saturn. A few days ago, the illustrious papal commissary, Pietro Placentino, having been requested in your name, first by letter, and then very strongly by word of mouth, not only most generously promised what I had sought concerning the obligation of revenue, but also confirmed it in writing. Then, when I wish to thank you personally for the favor granted at your behest, ill health detained me for many days. At last, I determined to make the attempt the day before yesterday, but my breath so failed me in mid-journey that I was scarcely able to walk back home. Soon it was reported to me that your favor had been suspended. I was utterly astonished. When I looked most carefully for the cause of this reversal, I could not find it on earth, but at last I discovered it in heaven. Do you wonder at this, Reverend Father? But when the thales of Miletus fell upon earth, did he not rise in heaven, so that he might there perceive those things which he had not seen here? So I observed what had recently prevented my coming to you, and found that it was a malign aspect of Saturn, which was square to the moon. Whence I concluded that your favor to me had been intercepted by the wiles of a certain Saturnine man. At first, I abandoned all almost all hope of remedy, for I considered that perhaps Saturn was the most powerful, as well as the highest, of the planets. But then I recalled what the ancient sages say, not without very good reason, in their fables about Saturn and Jupiter, Mars and Venus. They say that Mars is bound by Venus, and Saturn by Jupiter. This simply means that the benignity of Jupiter and Venus holds in check the malignity of Saturn and Mars. I believe, therefore, that an injury inflicted by a Saturnine man may be effectively cured by one of a jovial disposition. Now, in whom do I see the full reflection of Jupiter, his power and his gifts? At present I find no one in Florence except you. People will perhaps laugh at a priest who heeds astronomy. But I, relying on the authority of the Persians, Egyptians, and Chaldeans, consider that while earthly matters were indeed the concern of others, heavenly matters in truth were the sole concern of the priest, so that while human affairs might be left to human counsel, matters for the supreme authority should be referred to by the ruler of heaven. But do you wish us now to set heavenly matters aside? Let us do so. What therefore shall I ask? This one thing, that since you are above Caesar himself and everything else, you should not allow yourself to seem beneath even Pilate in this one point. But may it be your will that what has written in the first place by the commissary with your authority, in my presence and on my behalf, may remain written. This, Reverend Father, is what I ask, so that there may be a time for philosophy. Nevertheless, may your will be done.